Good afternoon, everyone. Midwinter coming back to Japan and Asia. Chiba, record cold and snow. Also, U.S. Great Lakes, 18 inches of snow over the last few days. Rocky Mountains, heavy pounding again, up around 18 inches. New England states. And as we start to see the progression of these late spring snows and freezes, we're going to have to move our fish farming indoor. The oceans are in trouble anyway. So the new tech we're going to be switching over to will be something like this recirculating aquaculture system. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030. And join me for episode number 15 on Mini Ice Age Conversations, where I talk about the vibrational shifts that we're experiencing due to increased cosmic ray density, these erratic seasons with our weather, and all of this global chaos going on as a litmus test as governments prepare to see how us as a human species are going to react when our food, water, and currencies are taken away. And as was predicted in the grand solar minimum, our seasons are going to start extending out from winter further into spring where winter will make a resurgence and come back after everything is butted out, as we saw in the U.S., and then that's killed off and our fruit is affected along with the berry crops. Here's another example. Chiba Prefecture in Japan, winter again, record cold temperatures and snow across the area, as well as... Just a massive cold front rolled across Asia over this last week, dropping temperatures as much as 20 degrees Celsius. More examples of these late freezes here are the New England states in the U.S., 18 inches in some of the deeper spots there. The Rocky Mountains and western states as well, with Canada, snow, snow, deep snow. Taking a look at some of the temperature gradings, again below zero, but some of these plants have already butted out and flowered because of the warm spring, which is an inverse as well. Grand solar minimum expected effects. We're seeing it again. And another 12 to 18 inches of lake effect snow coming off the Great Lakes in the U.S. Because of all these changes, A, we're going to need to start moving our agriculture indoors, which will involve LED technologies and different types of array of grow units as well with our oceans, with the amount of plastics right now in the Pacific Ocean in some areas, it is six parts of water for every one part plastic. And the gargantuan releases of radiation into the sea as well. Our oceans are not the healthiest currently. So we're going to have to switch to different systems like this. Green fish farming. Now here's a factoid you probably never heard before. The entire Norwegian production of salmon, a million tons a year. Could be grown in the area about the size of just a single runway at John F. Kennedy Airport in New York. Now the problem with the current fish factories built on land is they're always polluting. There's always so much nitrogen coming out. But this new tech releases almost no pollution. It's called Recirculating Aquaculture System. It has solids removal, biofiltration... And it's a fully recirculated water system, so the usage of water, which is a main concern as well, is very limited and reduced. Then these live tilapia are delivered by truck. There's still an enormous amount of people who will only accept live fish. An example here of one of the systems at play, more like a greenhouse enclosure. And then there's a step up again in the shrimp production here. That involves quite a bit more equipment layout than it does for the fish. Now we'll come back and all of this water is completely recycled. All of it's filtered. But one thing, this new fish feed that's made from common grains, in the future that's going to be a problem because as our wheat supply gets affected and the corn supply, probably around 2019, they're going to have to substitute already the grains that they're developing for this fish farming system. I understand the algae and different amino acids that the fish require, but that common grains is definitely going to have to find a substitute product. Tilapia here, they're harvesting the eggs out of the mouth. Really interesting how the tilapia protect the eggs. The mothers put those eggs in their mouths. They're not eating their eggs. They're protecting them. Now, because of the cost of running with American workers, American labor, etc., and if you move the system into Europe where it's European workers and European laborers, it still makes it pretty uncompetitive when you come to the fillet type of thing. So that's why a lot of these fish are still sold whole, 
but if they do find a way for filleting this out, it will be definitely as competitive as cheap as imports. And then we can substitute and have our own locally produced protein source. And this is the future for us. The contamination planet wide, and then the weather changes that are ushering in with this new mini ice age. We're getting the double whammy here. So again, these types of systems as a rollout for the future in the crystal ball, I could definitely see this right at the forefront of protein production. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. You can jump over to oilseedcrops.org, my website. I've been working on that a little bit. I posted this article there with a bit more information.